This engine could burn a gallon of fuel every four miles, leak oil from almost every seal, and melt a cylinder head if you miss a coolant change. Yet it was the backbone of America's trucks, buses, and even military vehicles for decades. This is the story of the 8V92, an engine that gave you more, but made you pay for it. If you're familiar with the legendary 8V71, which we covered in a previous video, link in the description, you'll know how Detroit Diesel's V8 engines shaped the industry. The 8V92 wasn't just an update. It was an all-new engine built for one reason, more power. The engineers took the familiar two-stroke V8 layout from the 8V71 and pushed it to the limit. They bored out the cylinders to 4.84 inches, kept the same 5-inch stroke, and ended up with a displacement of 736 cubic inches. More air, more fuel, more horsepower. On paper, it was exactly what operators wanted, a stronger engine that could handle heavier loads, steeper grades, and higher demands. But in the process of scaling up the design, Detroit Diesel didn't just make a bigger engine, they created something that filled a critical gap in the market. One of the most notable design advancements in the 8 feed 92 was the introduction of wet sleeve cylinder liners, a major shift from the dry liner setup of the 8V71. Wet liners sat directly in the coolant, allowing for better heat transfer and making rebuilds faster. You could replace a worn liner without machining the block. For fleet operators, this meant quicker turnarounds and lower downtime. But it wasn't a system that tolerated neglect. Without proper coolant maintenance using the right additives keeping the system clean, cavitation could erode the liners from the inside out, eventually leading to catastrophic failures. It was a design that worked well when cared for properly, but it added another layer of complexity to an engine that already required respect. The 8V92 stuck to what made Detroit diesel engines unique. A two-stroke design that used a gear-driven roots blower to scavenge exhaust and push in fresh air for the next cycle. Without the blower, there was no combustion, plain and simple. This setup gave the engine its distinctive high-pitched scream, the sound that earned Detroit's engines their nickname, the Screamin' Jimmies. <laughs> The two-stroke design also meant fewer moving parts compared to a four-stroke diesel, and it allowed the engine to be compact for its power output, a big selling point for operators who needed performance in a tight package. Fuel delivery was handled by unit injectors where each cylinder had its own camshaft actuated injector. This concentrated high-pressure fuel generation at each cylinder, eliminating the need for long, external high-pressure fuel lines and making for a simpler, more compact fuel system. The injectors were cooled and lubricated by the fuel itself. Combined with the absence of long, external high-pressure lines, this reduced the overall risk of fuel system leaks, a welcome improvement over earlier designs. The valve train featured four exhaust valves per cylinder, all operated by push rods and rocker arms off a single camshaft. This setup improved exhaust flow and helped the engine handle higher cylinder pressures, a necessity in a platform designed for more horsepower. The 8V92 also used crosshead pistons, a design where the piston crown and skirt were separate components. This helped reduce side loading on the cylinder walls, which minimized wear and extended the life of the liners, an important feature in engines that were expected to run hard and long. The engine's cooling system was a closed loop design adaptable for either radiators or heat exchangers depending on the application. A gear-driven oil pump fed the lubrication system, which used full-flow filters to keep oil clean and flowing under pressure. The engine was built to run at high RPMs for extended periods, a hallmark of Detroit Diesel's two-stroke design philosophy. The 8V92 wasn't just a technical evolution, it was a strategic move for Detroit Diesel, a division of General Motors. Competing with industry giants like Cummins and Caterpillar, 
Detroit needed an engine that could hold its own in a market demanding more power without giving up the advantages of the compact, two-stroke layout. The 8V92 gave them that. While exact market share numbers are hard to pinpoint, the Series 92 engines, including the 8V92, became a backbone of Detroit's lineup in the 1970s and 80s, keeping the company competitive in the face of stiff competition. The 8V92 found its way into a broad range of industries, from transportation to industrial and specialized equipment, wherever operators needed a balance of power and packaging. The engine was offered in several variants, the naturally aspirated 8V92N, the turbocharged 8V92T, and the turbocharged and after-cooled 8V92TA. Each had its own strengths, and each attracted a following among operators who needed that specific mix of performance and durability. The 8V92 was a machine that could fit into a lot of roles, but as many would soon learn, it wasn't always an easy engine to live with. The 8V92 earned its place in the diesel world by delivering exactly what operators needed solid power in a package that was relatively compact for its power output. One of the most common places you'd find an 8V92 was in Class 8 trucks crisscrossing America's highways. For long-haul drivers pulling heavy loads over mountain passes or across endless flatland, the extra horsepower compared to the older 8V71 made a real difference. The 8V92 had the muscle to pull a fully loaded rig up steep grades without forcing the driver to constantly drop gears. And that high revving, responsive nature was something drivers appreciated, especially when they were racing the clock. Sure, the engine burned fuel faster than some competitors, but for operators who needed to get freight from point A to point B without compromise, the 8V92 usually delivered. The engine wasn't just at home on the highway. It found its way into bus fleets across the country. City transit systems, intercity coaches, and private charter companies all leaned on the 8V92. The engine's relatively compact design and power-to-weight ratio made it an ideal fit for rear-engine bus layouts, where space was at a premium, but power and reliability were non-negotiable. The 8V92 could handle the constant stop-and-go grind of city routes, while still having the legs to run at highway speeds. For transit authorities and operators, it was a workhorse that could handle the daily punishment of hauling passengers through traffic and up steep urban hills. Marine operators also put the 8V92 to work in a wide range of vessels. Commercial fishing boats, offshore supply ships, small tugs, and pleasure boats relied on the engine's smaller footprint and solid horsepower. Its ability to hold high RPMs for extended periods made it a good match for marine engines that needed to push vessels at steady cruising speeds for hours on end. It wasn't uncommon to see twin 8V92s paired in a fishing trawler, working together to provide reliable power in a package that could fit in the tight confines of an engine room. The military saw the 8V92 as a reliable choice for a variety of applications. The engine showed up in Marine Corps LVS trucks heavy equipment transporters, mobile command units, and even in stationary generators supporting field operations. Its size and parts commonality across the Series 92 family were major selling points for the military. When a vehicle or generator broke down, having an engine that shared parts with other equipment simplified logistics and made field repairs easier, something that mattered when you were in a combat zone or far from a supply depot. The 8V92 also found a home in specialized equipment. Fire trucks, large construction machines, mobile cranes, and industrial power units. In these applications, the engine's ability to pack a lot of power into a relatively small space was a huge advantage. Operators valued the engine's fast throttle response which could make a difference when you were trying to position a crane, respond to an emergency, or run auxiliary systems under load. The 
8V92 wasn't the only option on the market. Cummins and Caterpillar were both strong competitors, but the 8V92 earned its place by offering a blend of power, size, and simplicity that worked for operators in a variety of demanding situations. It was a flexible, high-performance engine that could be adapted to a wide range of roles, and for a time, it was the go-to choice for operators who needed to get the job done. For all the strengths the 8V92 brought to the table, it had an equal share of challenges. Some baked into the design, others a result of how the engine was used in the real world. The engine's increased displacement, turbocharging, and aftercooling gave it impressive horsepower, but those same features introduced heat, stress, and complexity that the old 8V71 just didn't have to deal with. One of the most common complaints about the 8V92 was its fuel consumption. The engine had a reputation for being thirsty, a trait shared by many two-strokes, but the 8V92 took it to another level. It wasn't uncommon to hear stories of rigs running 4 to 5 miles per gallon, or worse, when hauling heavy loads. This was the trade-off for the extra power, and for owner-operators watching the fuel gauge drop like a stone, it was a tough pill to swallow. The high revving nature of the engine meant it was happiest when running hard, but that also meant it wasn't always the best fit for applications where idling or light loads were common. Heat was another constant battle. The 8V92 ran hot, especially in the turbocharged and aftercooled versions. Keeping the cooling system in top shape wasn't optional, it was essential. Radiators needed to be clean, fans working properly, and coolant maintained with the correct additives to prevent cavitation and corrosion. Any lapse in maintenance could lead to overheating, blown head gaskets, or even cracked heads. The wet sleeve design that made rebuilds easier also meant that any failure in the cooling system could quickly turn catastrophic. Oil leaks were almost a given with the 8V92. Whether it was valve covers, blower seals, or airbox drains, you could almost count on finding a fresh spot on the floor after it had been parked. It was the kind of engine that seemed to sweat oil, and while many operators accepted it as part of the package, it added to the frustration for those who were used to tighter engines. Maintenance was a mixed bag. The modular design and parts interchangeability were a plus, but the 8V92 demanded attention. Regular oil changes, fuel filter swaps, valve lash adjustments, and coolant system care. Skip the maintenance and the engine could punish you fast. The turbochargers added another layer of complexity and when aftercoolers were involved, the stakes got even higher. A plugged or leaking aftercooler could send intake temperatures through the roof, leading to power loss, detonation, and eventual failure. The engine also wasn't a good match for all applications. In tractors and stationary equipment where long idle times and light loads were common, the 8V92 could carbon up and foul injectors, leading to rough running and reliability issues. It was a high-strung engine that liked to work hard, not one that wanted to sit around all day. For some operators, the 8V92 was a dream. Fast, powerful, and thrilling to drive. For others, it was a headache that leaked oil, burned fuel, and broke down too often. It was an engine that could deliver great performance, but only if you respected it, maintained it, and ran it in the right application. If you didn't, the 8V92 had a way of reminding you that bigger isn't always better. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, the writing was on the wall for the 8V92. Stricter emissions regulations, rising fuel costs, and changing market demands made it harder for a two-stroke engine to stay competitive. The high fuel consumption that had always been part of the 8V92 became a liability as operators looked for engines that could deliver more miles per gallon. And as emission standards tighten, the old two-stroke design, built for power, not efficiency, just couldn't keep up. Detroit Diesel responded with the introduction of the Series 60, a four-stroke inline-six engine that was quieter, more fuel-efficient, and better equipped to meet the demands of the evolving trucking industry. The Series 60 wasn't just a new engine, it was a completely different approach. With electronic controls, advanced fuel management, and a focus on efficiency, 
It represented the future. And while some diehard fans of the two strokes resisted the change, the numbers didn't lie. The industry was moving on. By the mid 1990s, the 8V92 was effectively retired from most production lines, though it continued to live on in older equipment and niche applications. Some operators kept them running for years, either because they loved the sound, the power, or simply because they didn't want to invest in something new. You'll still hear them at truck shows, see them in repowered rigs, or catch a glimpse of one in a boatyard, rumbling to life for another run. In marine, military, and industrial settings, the 8V92 held on a bit longer, but even there the shift toward more efficient, lower-emission engines eventually took over.